Hey, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be covering putting one of these Dai, Dai Ling, uh, Chinese made uh, Hobbit clone kickstarts on a Hobbit, and also keeping your pedals. Now I can't take full credit for this. Um, I actually saw this on another person's YouTube, but they didn't really explain too, too much of it. Um, so I'm going to go over how I did it. Uh, the quality on these is, I would say, medium okay. Uh, they are cheap enough that, I mean, you could probably break one or two of them and not be out a whole lot. Um, if you get them off AliExpress, they're pretty cheap. So, what we're going to do here is I'm going to just cover what I did to make this one fit. Mine's a little bit different because I have this MLM swing arm on here which is slightly thicker, um, which means I had to shave this boss down a little bit. But uh, other than that, if you're using a stock swing arm, it's probably pretty close to the same. So a normal orientation for these is actually mounted like this. So you have this bolt goes into this hole, this bolt goes into that hole, which I'm using for an engine ground, and this third one goes down in on the bottom here. So what you can do is you can spin it around only use the one hole here, don't use this one at all, and use this one, and you can mount it forward. It still starts the bike. I have uh, these shorty arms off Treatland that just barely clear. Now you could even like lightly give that a scuff or play around with like where this is pinched on the on the arm just to get a little bit more spacing. But I mean, it's close enough that you can mess with it and you can actually get it on there. And then you have a kickstart on your Hobbit and then you can do dumb stuff like run uh, weird clutches on the back that you can't really do if you want to use pedal start feature. So, uh, yeah, let's zoom in and I'll show you all the stuff that I did here to make this work. So, what you need to do is get yourself one of these. I'll have a link. Um to AliExpress where I got mine. Uh, a note, some users that bought these on Moped Army said that it didn't come with this lever. This lever looks like it might just be like a Z50 style spline. I mean, you can count the splines and kind of figure out what might work on there, or you could make something. I don't really know. Mine came with a lever, although it was like very, very stripped out. So um, I might need to try and hunt one down. If I do hunt one down that is the same as this, I will leave a link for that as well. Uh, mine didn't come with a circlip, which was really annoying, so I ended up losing the ball and stuff, and I had to find another clip and find another ball off another kickstart. And it came with no grease in it, so you probably want to take it apart to take all these bolts out and just lube everything that's inside of here really well, because that's probably one of the things that will eventually make this break, is if it's dry and gets rusty, it'll it's not it's not an in, uh, confidence inspiring casting um, it's a little on the light side but it'll probably work for a while so first thing uh, there's two pins on here knock those off of there so that you can get a washer stack now when my lathe gets here I will probably not use this washer stack and we'll just make up a spacer but for the time being I just got five washers that fit under there and then made it, there's two little casting nubs that were on mine that I had to get rid of so I just ground them off real quick. Probably could have done it nicer in the mill but it's more or less just trying to see if they could even make this work. And then the second thing that I had to do was like slightly enlarge this hole, again it didn't have the mill so I just used a drill bit and just wallowed the hole out but you could definitely do a lot nicer of a job with a mill or a burr or something. I kind of took the cheap out route there, but I can always go in later and plunge it down with an end mill and um, make it nicer at a later date. And then the last thing I had to do was file down this boss square. So I actually, because my MLM swing arm is slightly thicker, I think that's the only reason that I had to do that. So if you're on a steel one, you probably won't have to do that very much. Um, or maybe just a little bit, but just basically filed it down a little bit so that it made up for the spacing in here. 
And then what that does is it allows you to put a bolt in there and a bolt in there. And they will line up if you, like I said, you slightly wallow out that hole a little bit. Probably guessing like two or three millimeters just by looking at it. <clears throat> so one other thing I did was I put this one wrap of electrical tape on there. There's quite a bit of slop in the cover and that just takes up some of the um, slop in the case. Um, it's probably, I probably could machine up a piece of shim stock or something and throw it in there, but I mean the tape takes up enough space that it works. And then to mount you, uh, I had a inner rotor on here, so I actually had to machine the face down flat, which got rid of the hex on there so that it would get on there enough with enough uh, grip, but it does work. There's enough clearance that the paws don't drag when it's running, which is really the only thing you have to take into consideration is make sure that the this isn't dragging on here or spinning while the motor's running, because it'll just wear everything out. <clears throat> And then that you'll need two bolts. Uh, I had to get a slightly longer one for the bottom, but the top one is just a, I think the standard size Allen key that would, well, normally it's a bolt. I have Allen keys in there, but that's uh, what I used. So the spacers, I'll see if I can get a shot down at the bottom here just to show you. So the top looks pretty normal. The bottom, we'll bring the camera down here one sec. So as you can see right here, we have a little bit of a gap where my fingers are. Um, I'm holding the camera, so I won't be able to show you me putting the washers in, but I just built up a washer stack. Like I said, if you have a lathe, you could do some shims or something like that, but they basically just go in there and then you cinch the thing down. So that's the next step. This hole is also not threaded, or at least on my cases it wasn't, so just got to put a nut on the back side of that bolt, but it all goes through and cinches up. So I'm just going to do that here now. So there you go. Like I said, it does clear, albeit barely. If you had a bent crank arm on there, uh, you can see I even like barely clear the pipe. I gotta put a little dimple there or move the pipe over a little bit. Um, one other thing to make note of is you always have to have the pedal back when you kickstart. You can end up with the kickstart getting stuck under the pedal, which is just really annoying. You gotta like jimmy the bike around. This does work. Uh, I have started the bike with this. Uh, granted, I haven't started this bike in a while, but let's see if you can get it to go. So there you go, that's a pretty uh, quick one. Uh, I just wanted to share that out there because uh, putting kickstarts on hobbits are sweet and like I said if you're tinkering with the clutches and whatnot on the other side you kind of either have to do a pull start or a kick start and this is one other option other than a pull start that maybe not a lot of people really know that you can go this route because they want to keep their pedals so it stays true to the old moped form and uh, I will probably be doing a video on this guy very shortly just to kind of wrap up that uh, series, although it's not the same moped that I started with. I actually picked this one up as a complete bike, but uh, I'll show you all the bits and pieces that I've thrown onto it to make it into what it is. But that's it for uh, this episode. Until next time, take care.